Hi, I'm Derek, and in this series of videos I will explain how to create PHP extensions. In a previous video we made a start with wrapping the RDP algorithm into a PHP function. In this video we're going to finish this. Let's dive straight in. There's usually four stages that you have to do for linking a external library that we already have to a PHP function. These are as follows. We need to parse our incoming arguments and make sure they are of the right type. The second is that we need to convert this into some way that our library function can use. The third step is to run our algorithm. And then the fourth one is to convert the output of the algorithm back to something that we can return from PHP. PHP provides functions and macros to help us parsing our incoming arguments. We do that with a macro that starts with send parse parameters, start. The arguments here are how many arguments are required and can be passed. In our case, that is two for both. If you remember, the arguments that our function accepts are first the points array and then secondly the epsilon value. To define that, you use zend param and then the data type that we are expecting. So we are expecting a points array, so we can use array. And then you can define the name of the variable that we are going to store this information. In this case, we'll call that points array. Secondly, we also need to part the epsilon. So we use then param and then double, because that is the data type that PHP internally uses for floating point numbers, and then the name of the variable. And we end the parameter parsing with another macro. We do need to create space to store this data in, so we have to define these variables in our function. Each type of parameter has its own variable type. These are defined in the PHP documentation. But for now, we only need to use the ones for array, which is called a z file, and the one for epsilon, which is a double. A Z file in PHP is actually quite an interesting data type because it is one that allows you to represent an actual PHP variable. This is a data type that you'll see used a lot in extension development. In this case, it is an encapsulation of the array that we're going to use. There is no specific data type directly in C that represents a PHP array, although you can access its data through a Z file but we need to make sure that it is of the correct type first, which is what Z param array checks for. After we've parsed our arguments, we need to convert them to an algorithm specific data structure. I like to write the helper functions for this, which I've done here as well. Point is going to be of the data type that the algorithm wants, and we'll have to define that. GRA isn't a standard type, so we need to make sure that we include the definition in this file as well. We add that to our list at the top. The helper function that we're going to create is a nice long one. I like my functions to be descriptive of as to what they do. And we pass in the points array. If this algorithm fails for some reason, we need to return immediately. As points is a pointer, we can do that with a null check.
However, if this fails, we still need to make sure that we return the return type that PHP expects, even though this helper function will throw exceptions. We still need to return an empty array here. So I'll move this array in it to higher up so that it is always done, regardless of whether the algorithm works or fails. I'll come back to the implementation of the conversion in a moment. Our third step is to run the algorithm. We can simply do that. The algorithm accepts the point array that we've just created, the epsilon, the starting index in points, and then the end index. Basically, the algorithm will run from point zero to the last one, uh, which it then use for iteration to narrow it down in uh, further parts internally in this algorithm. The algorithm modifies the array that's passed in, but it sets a flag for each of the elements so that we can use that to figure out which elements we need to return in our result. For that, we need to loop over the array and, and only add elements to our return value when a specific flag is set. I tends to be our loop variable, just like in PHP. We need to loop until the end of the array. And for each iteration, we add one. Nothing important here. However, we need to define i. So for each of the elements in the points array, we need to check what its status is. If the status is still set, we need to include a point in our return. Otherwise, we continue. If the point status is set, we need to do something for it. Each of the results in a points array is a coordinate pair, which have an x and a y coordinate. This turns into a PHP array with two points, the x and the y coordinate, but for this we'll have to define a data structure, which I'll call pair. Everything that's returned to PHP and comes from PHP is a Z file, which I've mentioned before. In this case, I'll have to create an array out of this. We've already seen how to do that with the return value, but in this case, it is not a pointer, so we'll have to use the address operator instead. Then we need to add the coordinate pair to this array. By using add next index, you add the next array element to a PHP array. But you also need to specify the data type, in this case, a double. You specify the pair, and then the value. Similarly, we need to do that for our y coordinates too. Then each pair that we create, we need to add to our return value. We do that also with next index, but in this case, what we need to add to the return value is not a double, but a Z file. And this is how you convert the array to a return value. There's one leftover thing to do, which is cleaning up. 
In the cleanup section, you need to free all the data that you have been allocated. In our case, the geo hash table to array allocates memory for points, which we'll now have to free. There is a helper function for this. And we've also forgotten to include one header file, the one that defines the algorithm called RDP Simplify. So we'll add that too. Now the only thing left to do is to implement our geo hash table to array helper function to convert the PHP array into the data structure that the function RDP Simplify requires. I can't guarantee that I'm not going to make any typos in this, but the compiler will tell us when we try to compile the extension again. First of all, we need to define our function and a return type. The return type is a GR array. With the name of the function, the one we've pre previously managed, and the argument accepts is this zful array. We know which data type to return, which, and we will define that up here so that we can do something with it before actually returning it. I tend to use TMP for this. We also need to allocate this structure. for which we use the GRA CTOR helper function. And we need to give that the amount of elements that we currently have in our array, which you can access by using zend hash num elements. Zend hash num elements want a hash table and not a Z file that is being passed in. To unwrap a Z file, there is always a macro available for a specific data type. And you have to make sure that your that the z value is actually of that data type before you do that. Otherwise, you'll end up having a crash. However, our Zend parse parameters already checked that this is an array, so we don't have to do it ourselves, and we can directly address the array portion of our z file by using the following macro. ZRVLP, and then with the argument array. And then we can close up all the function calls. This is the array that we're going to return from here. And we now need to loop over all the array elements to add them to our geo array. In PHP, you can use for each to loop over an array and there is a equivalent here as well. So let me use that. It is called zend hash for each val. There are multiple variants of it here, but the one we are interested in is, is only the value in the array. We don't want to have the key. What we want to do is we want to loop over the array that we've defined, which we can access in a similar way as above. We also need to store each value in, in the loop. I will call this entry. And just like with everything, we have to define what this is. You can guess, of course, already, this is a Z file. Or rather, a Z file pointer. Now, we also need to check whether the entry is actually correct. And for this, I'll implement another function in a moment. For now, we'll simply call it parse point pair. That returns null or error will bill out of this function. We're parsing latitudes and longitudes, so that's what we will store here. But technically, it should be x and y. You also see that I'm using long lat and not lat long for latitude and longitude. That's because the algorithm wants XI coordinate pairs, which are first east-west and then north-south, 
which represents to long and lat and not lat and long. This is a bit where often things go wrong doing things with geospatial information. So that's why I wanted to draw some attention to that. If we can't parse a point pair, we should show an exception. For now, I'm not doing that though. Because traditionally in PHP, normal functions don't throw exceptions. Instead, they will return null. But we still need to build out. So what do we need to do instead of a failure? We need to, of course, make sure that we free up the memory and then return null. Failure, destruct the array, and then return null. If the pair did parse, we then need to add it to our GR array where it stores the X and Y coordinates separately. I'll come back to I in a moment. The GRA also wants a status where that needs to be included for each of the points. So we'll have to set those all to true. So the i that we're using here is the index in the geo array. Because this isn't part of our loop, we need to do this ourselves. So after each addition, I will increase the number by one, but we also need to define and set this to zero first. We also have the latitude and longitude variables, so we need to define those too. Now at the end of the loop, we of course have the end of our for each and we need to tell PHP the same thing there too. And then when we're done with our algorithm, we can return TMP. But of course we haven't implemented parse points pair yet. So let us implement that as well. We will create another function and define it as static because this is something we don't need to use outside of this file. It returns true or false depending on whether it worked or not. It accepts a Z file for the coordinate pair, or hopefully. And it needs to return the double for the latitudes and longitudes. Output arguments are done through a pointer. That is also why I used the address operator here as well. Of course, coordinates is an array again. And in order to make things a little bit easier, we extract the RVL right away. Otherwise, we'll have to redo that a few times. This is then stored in a hash table. But for that, we need to check whether it is an array or not. Because users could have put in any data type here. Because it is hard to return actual error messages, I'm going to be a bit controversial and actually throw an exception here. Which is what more modern PHP does. As this is an argument, we can use the helper send argument value error. This creates a more standard error message, but it does require the argument number here. In this case, we know this is the first argument to the function, so we can specify one. And we can say that it must be an array.
it is possible to show in the error message what data type was actually provided by using a helper function, which is called send zfold type name. And then you need to give it the zfold. Of course, if we have an error, we need to return false. Now we know for sure that coordinates is an array, we can extract the value. This makes it a little bit easier to operate on. We need to make sure that each coordinate has exactly two elements, so we'll check for that. I will throw an exception for that again. Again, we try to make our error messages as clear as possible. And of course, we need to return false. The next step is to extract our values. We first need to obtain the first and the second element. In a found, we need to convert this from a zfold to a double and then return that from the function. First, we'll do that for our longitude. Zlong will contain the Z file with the longitude value. We use Z hash index find to obtain our first element in our chords array. But these are zero index, so we use zero here. If this is null, we have an error again. Because that means that the element couldn't be found. The reason why we have to check for the indexes as well is because a array in PHP could also be associative and we want an unassociative data pair. We throw the R exception again. And return false. And we do the same for the latitude. We also need to define our variables zlong and zlat. After we have obtained both z files, we now need to convert those to actual doubles, because these coordinate pairs could still be other numbers or, for example, true or false. We could check for the actual data type, but in this case, I'm just going to convert it to a, a double and let PHP handle this for us. For that, we use the function convert to double ex. For once for the longitude and also for the latitude. Now zlong and zlat are guaranteed to have a double, and we can then return that from this function by using this pointer addressing way to use a out parameter. Because we know it's a double, we can also use the specific argument to pull that out of the z file. This is called zdevolp.
Now everything is correct, we can return true. Now so far we have actually coded quite a lot of things, but now let's see what it actually compiles in the first run. Fingers crossed. I have made some typos here. It says there's an expected declaration or statement at end of input. In the expansion of Zend function. Let's see what I have done wrong there. Let's count the braces. Does this match with the end one? It does. So where did I not do it? Ah, I think I see it. I forgot to do it before the for each here. Now fingers crossed and I'll try again. I still have some other errors. I first get an error that the epsilon is undeclared. So let's add that. It looks actually that all of the errors are related to this on line 130. I use epsilon here, but I misspell it as epicillon here. Third time lucky? <laughs> One more misspelling. I guess I use autocomplete. All right, I still see one error message though. It says multiple definition of RDP simplify in RDP.C line 37. Let's have a look what's in there. That is indeed my function. So where else is it? We will use grab. Maybe I included the wrong file instead. Oh. Ah, I see what I've done. What I've done is included the C file and not the H file. That was a typo. Now let's try this again. And now I don't see any errors. Let me type make install. And run make tests. And I'm getting no errors whatsoever. Of course, what we haven't done yet is actually created a test file to make sure this actually works. Which is for today going to be our last step. Much geospatial information is available through geojson files, and I just happen to have one for Belgium already, which we'll be using to test our algorithm. So let me go into the test directory and download it. This file contains, of course, JSON, which we'll need to parse a little bit so that we can extract our coordinate pair. That is basically what we'll do in our second test. I like naming my test files with a descriptive name. It is quite common to add dash 001 as well, in case we'll get more test files. Each test file starts with a description. Then the test file follows. And this file is just normal PHP code, starting with PHP and ending as well. Normally in PHP files you wouldn't do an ending, but in this case it's actually useful because this file section gets followed by an expect section. The testing framework will run the file and then compare its output with expect. If you use a closing PHP tag here as well, that means you can run this file just as it was a PHP file. Otherwise you can't do that. This is actually quite helpful during development, which I'll show you in a moment, of course. 
If we open up the GeoJSON file for Belgium, you'll see what's in there. It is an array of objects. Each object is a feature. We are only really interested in the coordinates, so we're going to have to extract that. We'll use JSON decode and then address coordinates. So first we get the contents of the file. We're using file.contents and the file name, which is in the same directory and with the name geojson-belgium. .json. Then we run json decode on this. And the coordinates that we want to access in there are in this very complicated path. It's an array, so we need to pick out an array element. In there, we need to attach geometry. And then finally, coordinates. The way how this is stored in here is actually as a polygon. A polygon in GeoJSON is an array of line strings. Our algorithm only works on a single line string, so we need to pick only one element out of here. The first one. And now we should be able to run our algorithm by calling RDP Simplify. A point array and now we specify the epsilon, how smooth the line is going to be. And we'll do this twice. Once with 0 0.001. And once for 0 0.01. This should, of course, give a different result. What we want to show is how many elements are there in each of these results. We don't want to see the full arrays, but just how many elements there are in there. This should be less than the one that we originally had. I don't know what the expected answers are, so we'll just run a test and see what happens. Providing I've made no errors. So I can now run on the command line php load the geospatial extension and then run our script. And we get this as output. So our expected answers are going to be 1146, 1029, and 261. So if we copy those in our test file, we, the tests should then work. I need to be careful not to copy the first line because that is something that specifically Xdebug runs, and Xdebug gets disabled when you run the test through the test suite. I will now go up one directory and type make tests. And wonder, wonder, our test succeeded. Now we have both the implementation and a test file. I'll be calling an end to this slightly longer video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get notified of further installments, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.